How's it going everyone? It's Javi from Weather Sponge about Thousand and in this video we're taking a look at several different tropical disturbances where one of them could potentially develop into tropical storm or even hurricane Danielle in the more long term future. We're going to determine the chances we will see tropical storm or hurricane Danielle in the near future or hurricane earl in the more long-term future but before i begin make sure to subscribe if you want to see more weather content. so let's begin by taking a look at a gfs computer model at this time and we do see we do have several different areas of convection we're keeping an eye on we are of course keeping an eye on this tropical wave now moving through the main development region at this time and if we were to take a look um, if we were to continue move forward with the forecast, we do see that the GFS model has shifted its forecast compared to yesterday where it pretty much wanted to fizzle this low pressure system out in the main development region. But now we do see that the GFS model is maintaining the strength of this low pressure to the point where it, st it still has a well-defined and small enough center of circulation to where this does have a, now a higher possibility of developing into tropical storm Danielle than before. We have seen that chance rise a little bit um based on the national hurricane center's forecast it's still currently at a low chance so it's on the higher end of a low chance right around 30 percent but i wouldn't be surprised that in the very near future we will see that chance rise into more a more moderate chance because the current consensus from the computer models is that as this tropical wave continues to move westward the conditions will become more favorable to the point where we could potentially see hurricane danielle out of this tropical wave as currently Two, um, both of the main computer models are agreeing that this should develop into a hurricane by the time this approaches the Caribbean. Now, we need to take it with a grain of salt because by the time this does develop, um, the, the computer models do expect this to develop into a hurricane. We're already around seven days out, but the fact that two of the main computer models have pretty good agreement that this could develop into a hurricane just to the northwest or northeast of the Caribbean shows that there is a higher level of confidence regarding the strengthening beyond the five day mark with this tropical wave, which is definitely concerning, especially since if it continues to move on further northwestward because potentially this could come uncomfortably close to the northeast if there's no major um if there's no major um, weaknesses in ridging right around the middle of the Atlantic to steer this out the sea. So this is something we're gonna need to watch over the next several days. Taking a look at what the European model is stating at this time, we do see that the European model does want to strengthen it not only into a hurricane, but potentially as strong as a major hurricane in the more long-term future. And unfortunately, it does come uncomfortably close to Puerto Rico, Dominican Republic, and Haiti, where it takes that track further southward as there's a little bit more ridging than what the GFS model currently forecasts. And you see that it, the European model, at least for its current forecast, isn't showing any signs that this storm would move out to sea as the ridging is quite strong just to the north of it to prevent it from moving out to sea before it maybe comes close to the United States, which is definitely a major concern. Now, taking a look at the GFS model, the good news is that with the um, with the GFS model forecast, at least as of the 12Z run, the 18Z run is coming out as we speak. We do see that the GFS model does want to steer this out to sea, which would certainly be good news, but there's still a high amount of uncertainty regarding the track of this storm because if the ridging is a little bit stronger then we could see this take a further westward track but if there's a little bit more of a weakness in ridging then this could move further northward but there's still uncertainty whether or not this will even develop into a tropical storm because while the both of the two main computer models want to develop this into a hurricane we have to keep in mind that they want to develop this into a hurricane beyond the six or seven day time frame so there's still a lot of time to iron out the forecast we're going to need to pay close attention to the relative humidity and while there it will be quite a bit of dry air just to north of it, it seems like both of the computer models think that this tropical wave will fend off a lot of this dry air especially since it may have a small circulation which would limit how much air it absorbs um that's very far that's far away from it so as a result we would see less dry air and train the storm it's if it's able to um create a very small center of circulation and very small um and if the storm is going to be very small in general because wind field will be small and as all it'll absorb less air that um air that's very far away surrounding it so the dry air could be fended off if this storm manages 
to stay um, maintain a small center circulation. So we're gonna need to pay close attention to that. Um, the two main computer models do believe that the dry air won't be much of an issue as there's gonna be just enough moisture surrounding it, but we can't rule out the possibility that the dry air could be a little bit too much for this storm to handle and organize itself to become a tropical storm or hurricane. But I'd say the chance is almost at a moderate chance at this point, we will see tropical storm Danielle um, very soon within at least the next seven days. So that's certainly something we're gonna need to pay close attention to. And of course the upper level winds because because that will be another thing it's going to need to contend with. While both of the main computer models do expect that there's going to be quite um, strong upper level winds just to the north of this storm, it seems like the computer models are leaning toward the fact that there will be an upper level high right over where the surface low is located for where it'll be in an area where the wind shear could be just light enough for it to organize itself as it moves northwestward and that would definitely be the worst case scenario because not only would that limit the upper level winds over the center of circulation but that will that would increase the divergence aloft which would allow for a higher in an enhanced amount of convection because there's a lot less air um that's in the upper levels of the atmosphere that's holding the storm down and the convection down so as a result we should definitely limit so that should definitely limit the divergence in the upper levels of the atmosphere and we do see that um right around the um gulf of mexico we do see that the um that the storm is only strengthening as this continues to move on further northwestward so we do see that the um that it is um strengthening quite a bit where we do see the gfs model wanting to lower down the pressure down to 945 millibars which would definitely be a concern in that there's a high level of divergence right around where this low pressure system is located so that would certainly create um that would certainly create a more um, um, favorable environment since there would be an enhanced amount of convection right around the Gulf of Mexico. So as a result, we should see the storm strengthen as this continues to move on northwestward. But there's still a lot of uncertainty. The European model does not want to strengthen this so precious system in the Gulf of Mexico at all, as it do as it just doesn't expect that high level of convec of convection to occur right around the Caribbean. So as a result, we do see that it's gonna deal with a lot of dry air, um, um, that um, this tropical wave would deal with a lot of dry air to a point where it won't really have a very fast rate of development in the Caribbean. So as a result, that would certainly limit its potential when it comes to its strengthening process um, and would definitely limit the chance that tropical storm Earl does form in the Caribbean. So still a lot of uncertainty regarding the amount of moisture. We're just gonna need to wait and see which one's a more correct scenario where will we see a GFS model scenario be more correct where we do see a little bit more moisture in the Caribbean or will we see a little bit more dry air? We're just gonna need to wait and see. But so I'd say the chance of tropical storm Danielle developing right around the main development region is certainly a lot higher. So make sure to um, keep that in mind around the Caribbean because it co could come uncomfortably close to you guys. So you want to make sure to be aware of that possibility. Now, take a look at um, what um, the five day graphical tropical weather outlook and while it is low like I've been saying again I do expect that chance to increase for this assurance because it seems like all signs are pointing to the conditions becoming more favorable as it heads further northwestward where the wind shear will be just light enough and we will see the storm really organize itself to a point where it will develop a well-defined center of circulation so that's going to be something to keep in mind and we do see that um, there is a low chance right around the Caribbean, um, right around the 20% chance that this develops within the next five days. So that's only something to keep in mind as well. Now, um, um, now taking a look at the water vapor imagery, we do see a decent amount of dry air right around the Caribbean, and we do see that there is a high level of convection going on right around, um, um, right around the um, main development region as well as a result of this disturbance. Now this, um, so right now it's under a fairly humid environment, so it should be able to organize itself within the next couple of days, really um, strengthen as this continues on to move westward. And now taking a look at the ensemble members, we do see that um, quite a bit of the spaghetti models want to take this towards 
Um, Want to strengthen this quite a bit, almost to hurricane size, which is definitely a major concern that we could see a hurricane just in the North or Caribbean as early as next week. So it's definitely something we're going to need to pay close attention to. And we even with this assurance, we do see a decent amount of the spaghetti models wanting to take um, nearly a uh, tropical storm or hurricane making landfall somewhere along the Gulf Coast. And we do see, uh, but we still do see a decent amount that don't want to develop this at all. So hopefully that remains. But the fact that a lot of the ensemble members do want to strengthen this to maybe hurt around hurricane status is only a concern. So we're going to need to pay close attention to this over the next several days. Now, here's my forecast regarding the potential for Tropical Storm Danielle and Tropical Storm Earl. Um, like I said, Hurricane Danielle is a possibility at this point with the ensemble members and both of the two main computer models wanting to develop this into a hurricane. Despite being far out in the forecast, we still need to outline that as a possibility as it seems more likely the conditions will become more favorable um, once this storm continues to head further westward. So that's something, something to keep in mind and we're going to need to pay close attention that this is a disturbance right here just to the south of the Caribbean island so make sure to pay close attention to that but anyways guys I think you guys for watching make sure to subscribe if you want to see more weather constant and I hope you guys have a good day